Hello. And welcome to episode five of Novatel's webinar series on an introduction to GNSS. My name is Haley Lawrence. I'm the positioning product manager for agriculture at Novatel, part of Hexagon. Thanks for joining me. This is the fifth of seven episodes in our introduction to GNSS webinar series. So far, the series has demonstrated and explained calculations and technologies behind GNSS. So you should have a pretty solid foundational understanding at this point of satellite positioning. Last episode, we reviewed how to resolve positioning errors through GNSS equipment and infrastructure. Another way to resolve errors and further finesse your position is by using additional sensors like inertial navigation systems. In this episode, I'll explain inertial navigation systems, sensor fusion, and how additional systems work to complement GNSS positioning. If you'd like to read ahead about these technologies, download our introduction to GNSS book at Novatel.com. Let's start off by explaining what an inertial navigation system is. So an inertial navigation system or INS uses rotation and acceleration information to understand your movement in a three dimensional space. It calculates your position, velocity and attitude in relation to an external reference. An inertial navigation system uses inertial measurement units to calculate your precise relative position over a certain period of time. An IMU includes a gyroscope and accelerometer on each of the three orthogonal axes. These sensors measure rotational and linear acceleration so that the INS can use these measurements to determine the position, velocity, and attitude of the vehicle, where attitude here refers to roll, pitch, and azimuth. But IMUs still need an external reference in order to determine your location on the Earth. The INS on its own can only provide measurements in reference to itself. In order to understand where it's situated in 3D space, it requires an external reference. So that is where GNSS comes in. Both GNSS and INS positioning have their benefits and limitations. As we've seen in past episodes, GNSS positioning delivers latitude, longitude, and height nearly anywhere in the world, but you need to have a direct line of sight to at least four satellites to be able to calculate your position. You can have meter to centimeter level accuracy, but that varies and can be disrupted as a result of signal blockages, multipath, or atmospheric delays. INS calculates the change in position based on its own direction and orientation measurements, but it does require an external reference for those measurements to be applicable to the environment it's in. With any system, errors are present. So in this case for INS, sensor errors inherent to the IMU can cause position drift over time and require an absolute reference to be able to correct for that drift. Lastly, accuracy can be limited by the quality of the IMU, as INS can only generate a position in relation to that externally provided point. But when combining GNSS and INS, they seamlessly complement each other. While the GNSS position understands your location in the world, the INS solution describes how you move through the world. When GNSS signals are disrupted or a line of sight is lost, INS navigation can extend accurate positioning until those signals return. INS can be used as a constraint to reacquire lost GNSS signals faster or even filter out poor quality signals altogether. 
And lastly, the position calculated by GNSS can be used as the required reference point for the INS to be able to function. Altogether, GNSS and INS complement each other really well to make up for each other's limitations. Meter to centimeter level accuracy can be validated and further refined with a combined solution. A GNSS and INS solution allows kinematic applications to become much more accurate, especially in challenging GNSS environments. In this diagram, you can see how a moving vehicle relying on only its GNSS solution would lose positioning due to signal blockage and obstructions that are seen in this environment. Using an INS only solution would cause your position to be unreliable because it would drift over time due to not having that external reference. But having a combined GNSS and INS solution allows that calculated position of the moving vehicle to stay in line with its true path while operating in that environment. Combining GNSS and INS is an example of what we refer to as sensor fusion. There are other technologies that can be combined in this manner to deliver more and more accurate solutions, or to provide different types of information that help paint a better picture about the application. Sensor fusion can include the combination of GNSS and INS used in Novotel's SPAN technology, Sensor fusion also includes additional sensors like odometers, light detection and ranging, also known as LIDAR, and vision-aided navigation. This is by no means a comprehensive list of all of the sensors that can be used to aid GNSS. The technologies listed here are just an, just an example of some of the more widely used technologies. Novotel SPAN technology describes our software that combines GNSS and INS positioning and can include hardware built to measure the GNSS signals and IMU measurements together. GNSS and INS solutions can be combined and integrated at various different levels from loosely coupled to tightly coupled and all the way to deeply coupled. This coupling just describes how the GNSS and INS technologies are integrated together. And our introduction to GNSS book goes into a lot more detail about the difference between loosely, tightly, and deeply coupled solutions. Odometers track the velocity of a ground vehicle and can offer an independent measurement of distance into the GNSS and INS solution. This is especially beneficial in areas where there would be a GNSS signal outage like those experienced in a tunnel. LiDAR systems use pulses of light to be able to understand the solution surroundings. So each light pulse that is emitted from the LiDAR unit gets reflected from various surfaces in the environment, allowing the system to compute a range between the sensor and any surrounding objects. By monitoring the solution's range to an upcoming point with a known position, LiDAR can help improve position accuracy in an obstructed area, such as when operating in an urban environment. This is also an example of combining various types of different data, including positioning and point cloud data to provide meaningful information about the location and surrounding environment. Here's an example of a point cloud data map from a mobile mapping application. The lasers on the LiDAR device map the ground, the location of the trees and the bridge, where darker green indicates the closer distance to the bottom of the canyon, while object, objects become light green to orange the further away they were. As the vehicle moves through the point cloud, it can match its current range to various objects, such as the trees or the bridge, to a previous range to the same object, and that allows it to estimate the change in position over time. 
fission-aided navigation is another term for photogrammetry. This concept is very similar to LiDAR, except the system is now using precisely calibrated cameras instead of laser beams. Usually this kind of system takes the form of cameras to identify objects as reference points. The solution can then calculate relative position to those reference points, as well as a general heading to know what direction the solution is moving in. Again, this is an example of complementary data because you can use the GNSS measurements to georeference photographs. Given how complementary GNSS and INS solutions are, and knowing that INS is best used to measure movement, it's a natural progression for them to be used in dynamic or kinematic applications. For example, this video illustrates the trajectory of a skydiver testing a Novotel GNSS and INS product. With the two systems, we can see the skydiver's position in the world, as well as their velocity, azimuth, and much more as they fall towards the earth and land below. So there are a vast array of different applications for a combined GNSS and INS solution to be used in, including automotive and agriculture. Not only can GNSS and INS technology track the movement of a ground vehicle in these applications, but the trusted position can also be used to ensure that that vehicle stays on a specified path. And that is a fundamental technology that's used today for autonomous cars and tractors. In a marine environment, the right GNSS and INS solution would be able to compensate for heave motions from waves in the ocean. For mobile mapping applications, INS sensors can monitor the subtle changes in position, velocity, and attitude on a small device carried by its user while also simultaneously using LiDAR to collect 3D point cloud data about the user's surroundings. So sensor fusion really is a comprehensive positioning solution that extends and verifies an accurate position of moving objects. GNSS and INS technologies are very complementary when used together. So you can read more about sensor fusion and its various applications in our introduction to GNSS book and later in our introduction to GNSS webinars. This episode, we talked about how GNSS can be integrated with other sensors for enhanced positioning. Our next episode will continue exploring how these technologies can deliver positioning in very challenging environments, such as when there is heavy interference. But if you'd like to get a head start in learning those concepts, you can download our book, An Introduction to GNSS, on our website. Thanks for watching.